And joining us this week, we have Ian Boothby and, uh, and Giselle Legacy. They're both here to talk about their new Image Comics series, Exorcisters, out in comic book stores everywhere and on Comicsology on Wednesday, October 17th. Guys, thanks for coming on the show. Oh, for having us. I was about to say our pleasure, but then I realized I couldn't speak for Giselle. My pleasure, and I assume Giselle's pleasure as well. I'm not sure. Yep, yep. Um, I'm, no, I'm not happy at all. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've made it awkward already. 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 <laughs> it's quite all right. It's quite all right. We're dealing with the supernatural. Things always get awkward with the supernatural. Um, Very true. So that leads me to, of course, the, the big kind of like token question. How did this story all kind of come about? Uh, well, uh, our, our mutual friend, uh, Nick, uh, now I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name right, but Nick Bradshaw, um, uh, thought that we might work together well, and uh, so we went back and forth a little bit, tossed around some other ideas uh, that didn't end up uh, working out, uh, and then sort of came up with uh, with this one uh, about uh, two sisters who will get your soul back from hell if you accidentally sell it to the devil. And uh, and Giselle sent me some some drawings, and she just nailed these characters, and immediately. Uh, got more ideas for stories, and yeah, we've been just uh, jamming on it ever since. Cool. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> where did you kind of come up with the, uh, you know, visually, Giselle, where did you come up with the idea for the, uh, with, for the Hero Sisters? Um, well, I've, I've said this a few times already, but it's basically, uh, I'm a big fan of, um, uh, well, I mean, I'm a fan of a whole bunch of stuff, but what I had in mind when I, um, when I was thinking of this project, I was thinking of, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with, uh, XXX Holic, uh, from, uh, Clamp, which is a manga, Japanese manga, so it's very, like, uh, supernatural, sort of similar in a way to what we're doing here. Um, and, but it's, there's a lot of like uh, contrast, like white, black. It, there's like no color in this, and it's uh, it's just it's a beautiful thing to look at. But um, I can't draw like that, so obviously it's not gonna look exactly like what I had in mind. But uh, it is what it is at the end of the day. But uh, so I guess I'm influenced by that, but also influenced by um, uh, Rumiko Takahashi on her latest uh, series called Lumi, which is is also sort of similar in a way where the exorcisms and stuff like that. So it's very, um, it helps me a little bit uh, with uh, the creatures and stuff like that. And also a big fan of um, uh, the artist on Death Note, uh, Obata, I think. Uh, anyway, he's also, he, he did a lot of uh, like demons and stuff like that in uh, Death Note. So I'm, I get inspired by these things, but obviously it'll be my own take on things uh, because I can't, I'm not these people, you know, so... At the, at the same time. Yeah, I'm sorry, I came to be. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and also, another thing which I, sh I should probably mention is that, uh, uh, well, two years ago I did a series of uh, so Dynamite and uh, Betty Boop, and she ended up in hell a lot, so there was sort of like a little <laughs> hell universe, and it was um, very kind of cartoony hell. So I guess my hell is a little bit of a mixture of that with the other stuff that I was looking at at the same time. So, I mean, I'm not a very realistic uh, artist, but I'm also not like extremely cartoony either. So I guess it's sort of like in the in between. So right. I think I think it works. I, I mean, I, I hope it ends up. I hope people will end up liking it. So I guess we'll see what happens. So. Well, yeah, that's what I've, uh, I've I've been surprised by is uh, how cartoony certain elements have been, and that's. That's actually uh, been, a, been a really interesting element that's kind of come into the book where it was more, you know, more realistic with some dark elements, but there's some just straight out Fleischer style characters in this that have uh, been a lot of fun to write. I feel that, I mean, when you, when you think about it, when, you, you, when I was reading his scripts at the same time, I was kind of seeing a little bit of his cartoon influence as well when he writes. Like there's like this little creature that you're going to see in issue three, this little bug. Uh, when I came around, I said there's, that's going to be kind of cartoony. Uh, like I couldn't see it any other way. So but this was my vision, I guess, of it. But I, I kind of like what, how it turned out. So I'm, I'm very happy. I don't care if there's a little bit of like cartoony elements within something that's a little bit more realistic. So it's like, uh, I'm not sure what that would look like if let's say it was a TV show or a, a cartoon, but still, I, I like it. So. Yeah, it's, it, I almost thought it was going to be 
like a Jeff Goldblum fly type situation, but it ended up with the Max Fleischer uh, cartoon gloves on his hands. <laughs> oh, what's this? <laughs> and it's, it's just made the character so much more fun that I'm really looking forward to doing more with that character. Hopefully it doesn't uh, die in the next couple issues. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, no, no, don't kill it. Don't kill it. Give it a little, you know, a little figurine with it. It'll be a, it's the next pop that's coming up soon here, you know? That's not gotcha. the <laughs> Well, I mean, to that to that point, that exists not just visually, but like in the storytelling itself. And then, Ian, you were saying that it was originally there was a little more of a harder edge to it. Um, but this, I mean, you had come from a background of writing comedy. Giselle, you, you've worked on Archie. I mean, there is that kind of, so you guys are kind of striking the balance every step of the way. I mean, it's a fun, most exorcism books aren't fun books, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, the, the, if you look at the stuff like XXXholic uh, and Renee from uh, Umiko Takahashi, that's actually pretty fun. So for me, I, I don't see, but and there is some elements that are, you know, serious stuff as well, but they're, they're not afraid to, sh- to have a little bit of humor in there. But like Ian said, you know, if you, if, if you think of like Buffy and stuff like that, there are shows that they wanted you to be, they had to be taken seriously to some extent, but at the same time, there's always like a little bit of touch of humor that keeps people, you know, it, it's nice to laugh a little bit, even in the, the most extreme, serious times, you know? Yeah, I also, I also read a book um, for a scholastic called Sparks about two cats that dress up as a dog to save the world. And it's, it seems like that's a kid's book and it should be fairly light and just fun. But there's some very, very dark elements to that as well. And this book should be very, very dark, but then there's some very cartoony elements. And I think of it sort of like uh, Pixar movies where you have up. Where you got a dog who's, you know, the adorable dog that just he says squirrel all the time, but it starts off with a very dark, uh, you know, montage of, uh, of the life of this couple. And I think uh, it, it usually I, I want to balance things out wherever, wherever possible and don't be afraid to go cartoon if we want. And don't be afraid to go as dark as we want to go as well. And I think Giselle can do both very, very well, so why not? Having said that, that first ten minutes of Up makes me cry so hard every time. Oh yeah, it's brutal, and it sets it sets up everything so that everything else uh, you care about everything else. But it just started off with a grumpy old man, you know, who was just yelling at a kid. Well, who cares? But you you really do care about this uh, about this guy and his, and his backstory. And I can see how someone, if it wasn't Pixar. Uh, they wouldn't let you do it in a cartoon. Why would you start by showing a woman, you know, a couple and she's dying? It's all, oh my gosh. But it's a, it's a great movie. And so, yeah, even something like The Incredibles has very, very dark elements to it. And, and I, I, I think you can balance that more in, uh, in, in, in comics. And that's kind of what I try to do. Um. And for me, also art-wise, I mean, the, the reason I also, I can't really totally uh, remove myself from being a little bit cartoony when it's really what I've done most of my life. So I always like a uh, very clean style. Uh, I'm not someone who's super sketchy or super rough. You know, it's, I mean, everything that I've drawn and up to now has always had sort of this pretty clean line style. Some people don't like it, but I mean, you know, it's uh, it's what I'm, my eyes go for that. You know, I like the... Um, something very kind of it to me there's sort of like a design aspect to it it's almost like graphic design so yeah. very clean cut you know well you were mentioning obata earlier and you know i, I love death note and one, certainly one of the kates definitely looks like um not light but l they kind of have that kind of look to them um mm-hmm. the i'm trying to think what the appeal of of the i mean you had mentioned the kind of design aspect of it all but yeah there's there's a kind of you use a lot of rounded lines with the characters. I mean, it's probably the happiest, like, demons I've seen in a while, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. There, one, thing I, one thing I really like in the first issue is uh, we have a, a scene where a person is being basically dragged to hell, and then you, you meet the exorcisters, and I just like this one scene where they're just doing a little research in the in the house where this happened, or uh, you know, the house nearby where this happened. And uh, Kate, they're both named Kate, but spelled spelled differently, is just lying on the bed casually. 
And I think Giselle just does all these, this great body language with the characters that it just makes everything feel so grounded. Uh, but it's also very, very fun. And it just gives everything uh, just an added depth. You know, even though it's very, it's, it's got a, a, a semi simple style, it's, it's got a lot of weight to it. And, and once again, the acting and the characters is just, uh, it's just so good. I try. For me, it's very important that the um, you know that you can see the movement that, that when people talk uh, or move. It's you know we talk with our hands. We we talk with you know everything has. I, I want people to when they. It's a bit like I'm a big fan of um, Amanda Connor, and I find that she's sort of similar in the sense where she has a very clean style, but it, there's it, there's I don't know what it is, but it's it, she her acting is very very good. So for me, this is sort of what I'm kind of aiming at. Like, uh, with this right. so you know with this first issue the sisters not to go into details necessarily about it but you know they're so they're paranormal detectives they solve the they solve a case but you've also again absolutely not going into details about what this is but you've also kind of introduced this kind of like linking this overall thing that links these stories together are we going to see more standalone detective cases in addition, or soul retrieval cases, in addition to this kind of overarching story about their about their relationship. Um, I hope so. That's that's the intent in the in the first uh, five issues, which is the first story arc, at, at least. But I want to, any issue that you pick up. I would hope uh, you'd be able to just enjoy as it's as its own thing. Um, Giselle was mentioning uh, Buffy a little a little earlier. And to me, that was a show that you could just watch an episode and it would give you a, a nice, satisfying ride, but then also, you know, tap into a bit of the mythology and you'd want to stick around and go like, oh, what's, well, who's that character? And what were they talking about? And what are these details and, and what have you? And that's kind of what got me hooked on comics as well when I started off was, you know, you'd get a Spider-Man story or an Avengers story and, you know, it'd be fine on its own, but you'd still go, oh, this is, this is part of a larger thing and I want to check out what that's about. Uh, I mean, for me, I, I see it a little bit like, I'm not sure if uh, anyone's familiar with uh, Detective Conan or Case Clothes, which is basically this little guy who, he was, uh, he was an adult, but he was changing to a kid, but he was a detective, and then he solved these, um, these you know, these mysteries, these crime things, but at the same time, he's trying to figure out who um, made him this kid, so there's like this black organization that, that's behind the whole situation, so... As he moves along, like he'll solve some cases, so you do get some stories, but then there's another big story in the back, so I think it's uh, something similar to that, you know? Yeah. Solve a mystery as to why he is the way he is. So. Yeah, and a lot of, uh, a lot of Exorcisters is about lies and about family, you know, because of course they are, they are family. Uh, so we'll find out more about, you know, how they got to be where they are as the uh, book progresses. So, can we expect to see you guys kind of play around with time a bit to see like these characters' pasts? Uh, if you like fl- if, if you like flashbacks, this is the book for you. <laughs> we have so many so many flashbacks. That's that's my one worry sometimes is when I'm like uh, reading the stories. I'm like, did I make this all? Fl- is this book just all flashbacks? But. Uh, no, there's 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 a balance to it where you'll see, you know, again, uh, how how they each each of the sisters uh, got to where they are, and I put sisters in quotes and then cough uh, slightly to say there's a twist to that as well, uh, and you'll see uh, why they are now trying to help people uh, get out of hell. Yeah, kind of the underlying mission statement for the characters, and I suppose the series. Uh, moving forward, because in in a way, this issue, I mean, it's a perfect jumping on point, but it does, what I think is brilliant about this is you see them in action for the first, you know, for the bulk of the of this debut issue, but then the twist, which you discreetly coughed over earlier, <laughs> really does set up what the series is all about, so in a way, it's kind of like this this kind of extended prologue, right? Yeah, you, you, you see what a normal day in the life is for the characters, and then we uh, we expand out a little bit farther and uh, reveal one of the major, uh, yeah, as you say, twists to, uh, to to their relationship. And then in the second issue, we're going to do a flashback and explain a little bit more of that, and then we're going to go from there. 
So you guys had mentioned um, you guys had mentioned that Nick Bradshaw had had linked you two together, and you know, what was it about? And I, I suppose I'm putting each of you on the spot in a way. Ian, what was it about Giselle's style that was like, oh, we can totally do this like supernatural like demon book? And Giselle, the other the flip side of that question, what was it about this project where you're like, I totally I can knock this out of the park visually, absolutely. Well, I was I was familiar with uh, Giselle's work. Um, I had I had recently done a parody in the Simpsons of Archie comics, so I started reading some Archie comics. And Giselle had done a, um, a, a what do you what do you call it? gender flip uh, Archie comic that was really really great. And that led me to to reading her uh, uh, Menage uh, Three Menage Trois uh, uh, strip, and I just went, "Oh man, she's really got uh, she really does characters talking and interacting well, and has a really good uh, eye for comedy and good uh, good beats." And I was like, "Well, how can I expand on that to some to somewhere a little bit darker and push beyond?" You know, because I don't, I, I didn't want to write something that Giselle had already kind of done before, or make it just too light and make it Archie. I was like, okay, uh, so yeah, had, had the idea uh, from another thing that I was working on of uh, these two. It was actually going to be two brothers that would help people get souls out of hell. But then Giselle also drew women so well that it was like, no, 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 of course they should be women, and oh, of course they should be sisters. And then once I started thinking of Giselle drawing it, it all kind of came together. So. Um, I guess it's my turn. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I, I was basically just looking, uh, I like to collaborate with people. I mean, I do sometimes uh, work on my own comics and write the whole thing. And I'm mostly known for web comics. And, uh, but I've done some print stuff like uh, Archie, the Betty Boops, and Gemini Holograms, whatnot. Uh, but uh, I was uh, talking, I, every time I look for someone to work with, uh, I'm looking for someone who has a good sense of humor. So uh, I, I was just talking to Nick Bradshaw because we live, you know, we're from the same area. And uh, I said, you know, who do you think I should, you know, let, approach for, you know, for like someone who had like a good sense of humor. And uh, he, he mentioned uh, Ian Boothby and to me it made total sense. So, you know, I was familiar with some of his work. So uh, I said, yeah, I think this would be, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, you, you start talking and you see what the ideas, what, you know, people have. And then if you like the idea, uh, like you mentioned before, we, we did talk about other stuff, too. And, you know, that stuff may also happen. Uh, but uh, for now, I thought, like, this one in particular uh, was something that I thought to myself, I think I can sell it to uh, the people that are that already follow me uh, online with all the stuff that I do. So, I mean, like, we're putting this out with image, but in my mind, I, I figured that I can put this out regardless whether we do it through image or through some someone else. I knew I could kind of sell it. Uh, I was like, I think this could work, and I could really see myself doing it as well because, you know, it was something that interests me, uh, strong characters, strong female characters as well, and it, I just, I don't know, like I'm a big fan of Scooby-Doo, uh, Buffy, and stuff like that. So for me, it was just like, you know, I think I can make this work. So it's like, um, and I, 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 I thought to myself, you know, this, this could, you know, go for a fairly long time, you know, if people are really interested in it, you know. You kind of hit a tangent that I feel like there was a month that we were doing this show where we literally asked every guest, like we asked the Motor Crush team this and everything, and um, just because they accidentally opened the, uh, they said the trigger word and you did, it was Scooby Doo. Who is, <laughs> who is your favorite sidekick in the in the Mystery Machine gang? Oh, go ahead, Giselle, please. Oh, you mean uh, which? Psyche, you mean the, the favorite uh, character? Yeah, yeah. I mean, not you know, unless uh, unless it's Scooby himself. I feel like most people's favorite character is one of the supporting characters in the in the Scooby Doo cast. I mean, I like them all, but obviously, you know, I have a little. You know, I like Velma. I guess probably the you know the the most. I guess. Uh, I don't know. I, I like them all personally. But personally, the, the, the main reason I like Scooby Doo is because I, I, to me, it's so gender uh, neutral uh, mm. in a sense where you can be uh, as it's really fifty fifty split as to who likes this property. You can be female, male, or whatever. It doesn't really matter. And uh, you just you like the property. Some properties are really just more for for women. Some more for men. And Scooby Doo was always the one for me that was like. It's for everybody. 
Uh, and that's why I thought to me it was like the perfect property. It's like, it's just, it's, you know, in, in that sense, obviously, you know, it doesn't, uh, you could have, you know, you know, race, you know, mix in there. But if you think about it for back when it was created, I mean, in a sense, uh, Josie and the Pussycat was probably better because they had Valerie in there, which is sort of like, uh, they were trying to imitate Scooby-Doo. Uh, which I'm also a fan of that show as well. Um, uh, mainly, I was always a big fan of uh, Josie and the Pussycats. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so I guess I, I like them all, but, you know, I guess Velma probably. Cool. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I actually ended up writing them briefly at DC. I wrote a story for the, for the, for their uh, comic book, Scooby-Doo. And, um, and they also shot Scooby Doo the movie here in Vancouver, so uh, yeah, I, I like Scooby Doo. But uh, Sh- uh, Shaggy would be my character because he's scared, but he still goes for it, and so I think he's the bravest of the bunch uh, because the, the rest don't seem to be scared of these uh, horrible monsters. It still surprises me though that these kids who are uh, you know young kids can uh, barely outrun elderly <laughs> gentlemen in heavy suits. Just very heavy suits. Yeah. You know, and, <laughs> and also, what would the elderly gentlemen in the heavy suits do once they've caught Fred? Fred would just uh, kick their ass. You know, he's, he's a grown, muscular, teen man, you know. And he, yeah. he can't, the, the guy who wants a real estate deal, no deal. But yeah, Shaggy, Shaggy's, uh, Shaggy's my guy because he's also part uh, Warner Brothers type character. He can do all this crazy... Yeah, stuff he can uh, he can dive in one dresser and appear in another. So he's somewhat magical himself, and uh, I, I like he, has, and he loves it. He's got a great posture as well. I just love the way he walks. He's very you know very funny, he's cute. Yeah, he's his own person. Clearly, he uh, sets his own style. He's a beatnik. I just I just like him. He's got a dog that loves him, and he loves his dog. So how can you not make him your main character? If I'm talking. Real big spin-off characters, I'd say uh, Dino Mutt. I also like that guy. Though he barely ever crosses over with them, but I, but I really uh, I think Dino Mutt is uh, is is similar to my character Sparks, uh, which again a dog that's like mechanical. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm I'm a big Dino Mutt fan as well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for the record, for anyone who didn't listen to uh, any of our uh, to that random Scooby Doo month we had with like the Moonstruck team and everything. Um, my favorite Scooby-Doo supporting character is Vincent Van Gool, voiced by Vincent Price. <laughs> ah, ah, from the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. Yes. Yeah. Deep, deep, deep cut, sir. Deep cut. Well done. But that's the problem with that is that's actual supernatural stuff. And no, Scooby-Doo, real ghosts should not exist in the Scooby-Doo world. Boo to that. Boo, I say. <laughs> that's, that, that is a fair point. That is a fair point. Um, so guys, something we ask everybody that comes on the show, what are you currently geeking out over? Hmm. What are you geeking out over? In terms of what we're reading? In terms of anything. The sky's the limit. Well, I'm, 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 I'm really enjoying, um, uh, Saga, but then who, who isn't? Uh, I, I, that book just goes anywhere and everywhere, and the only problem with it is I can't read it in public because there's always a really filthy page as you turn it, and then all of a sudden uh, a, a dragon is pleasuring itself, and so I have to like hide the comic and I cannot read it on the bus. But really, really enjoy enjoy that. Um, and I'm just I'm I'm loving where all these you know again it couldn't be more mainstream but I'm loving where the Marvel movies are going I love the uh, Infinity War I, I, they, I love that they've done basically an Empire Strikes Back and we have to wait a year to see if Spider Man's alive they've done what the comics used to do but they've done it in movie form and uh, and that's just fantastic to me. Uh, for me, I guess, uh, well, lately, comic-wise, uh, I've been rereading uh, Amy Asha from uh, Rumiko Takahashi, which, uh, which is you know, similar a little bit to what we're doing uh, with the Exorcisters. Uh, so that would be on the manga side. On the American side, trying to think, what, what, am, I, what am I reading? <laughs> 
there's not there's not that much going on. Um, I mean, I, I I try to keep up with a little bit with the the Marvel and DC stuff, but uh, not not that much to tell you the truth. I mean, I do I did read the the latest um, Sonic uh, the Hedgehog trade because uh, I was very happy to see it was able to survive uh, after Archie and gone to. Uh, you know, to uh, IDW. So, um, yeah, and other than that, uh, TV-wise, I've, I've been, uh, I think the show that really, that I've liked the most lately is called uh, The Good Place. Mm. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but anyway. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, yeah? Okay, well, to me, The Good Place is like, I don't know, I think it's a great show, that the writing is, is good, that the cast is good. Um, I like everything about it. I like how weird it is. Uh, it's like, uh, Maybe in a way we are kind of doing something similar, um, so uh, maybe maybe that's why I'm also I'm gravitating towards it. So who knows? I, I no, I'd say so. There's yeah. demons and whatnot in it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think what I love about the good place um, is that in addition to just being and yeah, you could certainly speak to this to Exorcisters as well. In addition to just having like a steady stream of of humor, like a very solid sense of humor. Um, it's perfected the art of the cliffhanger. There's always a thing that happens at the end of every episode that makes you immediately want to watch the next episode. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's the the writing is excellent. It's really well done. Yeah. yeah, and and it did have a very large plot twist in the first season as well that uh, that turned everything around. And uh, oh, yeah, that was great. Yeah. yeah. Oh God. Are you looking for? I'm also looking forward to Sabrina, which is coming up uh, from Netflix there in about a month or something. That's that. I'm looking forward to that. I have a feeling that's going to be better than Riverdale, because uh, Riverdale, I, I don't, I don't really. I mean, you know, I've seen a few episodes. It was fine. It's not really um, the Archie that I had in mind. Uh, but Sabrina, I think, is going to be um, something that's going to be probably pretty good. Let's hope. Yeah, my, my only disappointment with the Sabrina thing was uh, I heard that Sabrina was going to be on Riverdale, the main show, and, and my hope was that like the first season of Riverdale was this, you know, a uh, mystery, dark mystery, Twin Peaks type thing, and then I thought like, oh, if they're bringing Sabrina in for the second season, now we're, now we're flipping it, we're adding a magical element, and maybe you could do something, you know, like Archie does, which is change genres every so often, do something very different in the second season, very different third season, but it seems that they've locked into what they want to do, and they want to be what they're going to be, but yeah, I am looking forward to Sabrina as well. well based on what I've seen from season three of Riverdale... Um, cause I see, I get early access to some stuff. Um, they, there's like, there's a cult storyline like a cult comes to Riverdale. So maybe one day we'll see Sabrina Spellman, even though she's on Netflix, make the, make the jump to the CW for a crossover. But, uh, but yeah, mm-hmm. there, there will be, I don't know how supernatural they're going with said cult, but, but there is a cult showing up in Riverdale and in, in the upcoming season. Cool. Yeah, I did a I did a parody of uh, Riverdale for the first issue of the new Mad magazine re- relaunch. So I had to kind of go back and watch a, a whole bunch of them, and I and I do and I do like and it's weird for me because I live in the same city that they shoot them in. So everything is like, oh, that's down the street for me. Oh, that's not that. Oh, that's that over there. Uh, I think they do. I think they do a good job, but it would be nice. Um, uh, probably season three or maybe season four. Flip it around a bit. Yeah, that would that would be good. Cross cross over. Have some fun. Do some flashbacks. to little Archie. Do some other weird things. You know. Yeah, such a weird book. <laughs> like such a weird property. <laughs> um, oh yeah. So, you know, before I before I return you guys to the to the uh, you know to the winds, what. What can you tease about the? I was about to say. Okay. Uh, do you call Do you call Canada the winds? Is that what you're? <laughs> well, I usually when I say, uh, are you, I guess you guys are both from what different parts of Canada? Oh yeah, we're totally. I'm totally far east, far west. Uh, okay. We have different oceans. We're we're that far apart. Yes. Yeah, we have four hours difference. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um. So uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, there's there's winds in Canada, I'm sure. Coastal winds in both your cases. Sure. Um, but before yeah. I return you guys to the wilds of Canada, then. Um, oh, there we go. Now we're talking. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what can we expect for the future of Exorcisters without you know necessarily giving the game away? Okay. 
Uh, I'm just working on the fifth issue right now, uh, and uh, so let's let's just say that that uh, the things end up not in hell, not on Earth, uh, but somewhere else. There. And uh, any any uh, teases from from you, Giselle, in terms of like maybe like references or maybe what to kind of expect uh, in terms of artwork? Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I try to you know get a little bit better with uh, my demons, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I always try to improve my stuff as I go along. I, mean, I I do find that I'm getting more comfortable. Like any any time you start something new, uh, you know, you have to you know get into the groove and whatnot and. Uh, I feel that I'm, you know, the further I go on, the, I feel the better, the happier I am with the, the results. And uh, I think uh, I'm looking forward to what, you know, to, to what's coming. I'm in the middle of issue four right now myself. And um, uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be fine uh, for deadlines, like for the first trade. And then uh, hopefully we, we expect to do more too. So we will expect to see some for at least uh, a little while as long as people are interested in it, for sure. So. Cool. Um, so again, the first issue of Extra Sisters out in comic book stores everywhere and on Comixology if you're more digitally inclined on Wednesday, October 17th, just in time for Halloween. Guys, thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you. Pleasure.